Hey everybody. Um, hello, it's Wednesday. Uh, and today I have for you another cartoon of Prince Valiant. And unfortunately there's like a little lag between my iPad and the screen um, because I want to talk about the drawings more, but um, for some reason just like the iPad latency for my streaming isn't working super great, but um, I'll figure that out. So uh, what's happening in this strip is, is pretty funny. Uh, so remember in like the last live stream I was talking about, um, like, oh yeah, he's really noble, like, you know, Prince Valiant, and that's probably why people like it. Um, you know, because he's such a good guy, and like, you know, unlike those Tarzan strips, he never, you know, portrays other cultures in a way that's bad. And then I also remember how I said I was like wrong about everything. Um, yeah, so I'm wrong about Prince Valiant <laughs> uh, in two ways. So the first way is that, um, and I'm just turning things blue here just to, to make it easier to draw. I figured out how to do that, which is very exciting. Um, so one is that when Prince Valiant starts out, uh, so I said that like I've been reading... Um, comics again and I have and so I've been reading through the Prince Valiant comics that are posted on something awful uh, and <laughs> the thing about them that's really funny is that it starts at the beginning so it's like you learn who Val is and so I kind of told the story and and essentially he's like like a feral animal that lives in the woods um, and so he he is a prince but he's also like penniless so um, like Last time we left him, his mom died, and, like, he has to go make his way in the world and adventure, and he, like, um, one of the very first things he does is, like, almost kill a guy that he knows because he was holding a rake. <laughs> you can look this up. I'm not making this up. Um, and so then the guy with the rake is like, um, oh, hey, I'm your friend. Wait, don't kill me. And Val's like, okay, I won't, I won't. Um, and as they're standing there, like, these knights come by, and one of the knights is Sir Gwen who ends up um, being Val's friend, and who also I made a lot of fun of uh, the other week because he had funny hair like Val's wife. Um, and and Gwen is actually much older than, than Prince Valiant, which was, like, surprising to me uh, because I, I, I get the impression in later strips, like, Gwen is the sidekick. He's not, like, the, the head knight. But in these ones, like, Val is a child, and he's, like, um, you know, he, <laughs> he, he needs adult supervision, as we'll find out. Uh, so what happens is uh, the Sir Gwen and his squire sh show up and uh, for s some reason, um, maybe they make fun of Val or something, but like, like Val's like, I'll kill you. If you... Oh yeah, the squire's gonna <laughs> like uh, cuff him for his disrespect. And, and Val Val's like, oh, disrespect? I am a prince of Thule. Like, <laughs> And so the, the squire goes to cuff him and he's like standing up on his horse and he's gonna like, like, cuff Val. And Val's like, oh no, you don't. And he like pulls him out of, um, you know, off his horse and like to the ground and, and like has like a knife to his throat. And Gwen's like, ha ha, I love this feral child. I want him. Um, oh, we can't just kill squires. And so they like, uh, I don't know. For some reason, like, Val's like, yeah. I, I want to be that guy. I want to be that knight. Um, even though I almost killed a squire. What do I need to do to be a knight? And then the guy with the rake is like, uh, okay, well, if you're going to be a knight, you have to, um, what you got to do is you got to have arms and you got to have a horse. And by arms, he means like weapons. And you got to have a horse and you got to like be noble. And he's like, noble, check. Where do I get these arms and horses? And the guy's like, yeah, I don't know. Horses cost a lot of money. And Val's like, well, I mean, the cow cows, how much money could a horse cost? $10? Um, uh, so the guy with the rake's like, well, I don't know, like a horse is probably a little bit too much for you, but there's this place on this island and you can just go catch a wild horse and ride that. And Val's like, yeah. And so he like goes to this place where there's like all these wild horses and he like through daring do um, capture the horse. And he's like, and then he like sits down and is like, oh boy, this horse needs a... Uh, like, uh, you know, needs a, a saddle. 
so I'm just gonna sit here and like make learn how to make a saddle and, and so he makes a saddle and um uh so then he like rides his wild pony and he runs back into Gwaine whose squire has died it's not really clear if like Val actually killed him um but so his squire is gone and uh like mm, I can't remember if I'm telling the story exactly right but that's fine so so Gwaine's like okay, well, you can come with me, Val, and, and you'll come, like, come, like, just come with me. We'll, it'll be cool. And, and, uh, so they're, like, riding to Camelot or whatever, and, and, uh, they get, they get set upon by brigands, by, like, a robber knight and a robber knight squire. And, uh, they attack the wrong guy because Prince Valiant is a feral child, and he's like, I'll straight up kill you! Um, and so he, like, maybe kills another squire? I don't know. Maybe maybe Gwaine's squire... I don't know. It's heavily implied that Val has, like, killed. That he's just straight up killed. Because he will, like, fight in an instant. And so, like, he saves Gwaine from, like, these robbers. And uh, they, like, tie up the robber knight. And they're like, oh, we gotta take this guy back to Camelot. He's been a real bad dude robbing people. Um, I've spent a lot of time on this hat a lot of time on this hat. I don't normally like color things in like this, but that's fine. Um, modern Inker too. So this is an Inker that's still part of um, Vintage Inking Brushes set. I've just made one change in that I've changed the shape of the brush. So it's a diamond instead of a circle. And I find that I kind of like that. I have a couple that I've done um, with sort of the different style so like this one is the same inker brush but um i have instead like a like a pie shaped wedge and i'm really just trying to get a different end i don't want like a circle end i want like an end that has like a different feel to it um and so this one i'm just trying out the diamond so it's like if you see like it it, it gives like this kind of curved shape to it um instead of just like a circle so it's like we're getting something just a little different. I'm just seeing how I like how that works because I want something essentially that just like goes from thick to thin um, and it doesn't and it doesn't have like a super like I don't know like what I'm trying to think of the best way to put it like it doesn't have like a super artificial end and I felt like the circle end was that super artificial thing. Um, anyway okay so <laughs> Gwaine and um, his this feral child that he's adopted, um, like they're, they're heading back to Camelot and they've got like this this robber knight that they've got tied up and oh no what happens on the way? Uh, this is the reason, by the way, that that Val is a, is like a feral child is that he he comes from like a swamp where there's just like monsters that will kill you at any moment. I think this is probably like might be part of how Foster's like Tarzan legacy and that is just like you do kind of get like this sense of 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 like it is a Tarzan s character in that is basically someone who doesn't know how to act in polite society but has like a lot of skill um and, and you know he's an Arthurian legend instead of just you know sort of I don't know I don't know who Tarzan is um but anyway so, so Gwen and, and Val are like running through, you know, the woods and like this like giant alligator monster comes and attacks them and they're, they're like, oh no. And then like Gwen, like, oh, I tried, but it is defeating me. And, um, like Val like figures out a way to like save Gwen from getting like murdered by this alligator monster. Um, and, and I don't know, it's like, it's good storytelling, uh, the way that, that Foster tells it, um. And then, like, so the night that they, like, you know, it was the robber baron, like, like Val, um, like, unhooks him, like, he unties him, like, they have him tied up, and he, like, helps defeat the monster, but, um, and then, and, and then Val is like, oh, yeah, well, this guy, like, really helped us out. We should maybe, like, untie him and not take him to face the judgment of the king, and Gwen's like, no way, man. You don't do the crime if you can't do the time. Like, uh, so they, they do have to take him back to Camelot. So they take him back to Camelot and, um, oh, I'm just looking at that nose. I'm like, is that right? Is that how that's meant to look? I feel like that looks all right. I mean, just, it's the thing under the nose. 
Let's turn mine off. You know, I mean, it looks... Oh, okay, so that's like part of his chin there. Yeah, so it's like you need this line for that to make sense. And do I need... I feel like that line under the nose is kind of confusing, like like this, uh, like this section is kind of confusing. Like, what is that shape? Um, I'm gonna leave it for now. But okay, so so they go back and they they meet King Arthur, and he's like sitting there with uh, Merlin in like a really great um, star covered robe and. And they're like, yeah, he's a robber. And then Val is like, oh my gosh. And he like, you know, because he has no fear. He's a feral child. He like stands up to the king and is like, hey man, this guy like killed a giant alligator. And, you know, we were all going to die. And um, the king is like, oh yes, interesting, interesting. Um, I, these long strokes are where the, the different brush shade comes in, I feel like. Uh, anyway, so, and he's like, oh, I'm very impressed that this young man is just yelling at me. Um, perhaps we will invite him to stay in Camelot. And Gwen's like, oh, nice. Um, he's a good cook. He's crazy. Or, he's bananas. Um, let's get him. Like, let's just get him. He's gonna be my squire now. It's gonna be totally rad, even though maybe he killed my other squire. Anyway. And so Val is like, oh, sweet. Could hang out with a bunch of dudes all day. And, like, maybe we're gonna, like kill stuff later it's gonna be so cool i love it here and the other nights are like yeah val we love it too um do you want to come drinking with us and he's like yes that is a great idea i've never drank anything before i will surely come and drink with these men that are my friends and so the men are like okay so they get him like super drunk and they're like and then they get him talking about like how awesome he is and val being like a feral child um, totally fires for it. And he's like, oh yeah, I'm so awesome. Like, I'm so great. I'm so drunk. And then like one guy's like, yeah, are you though? And like for Val, he's like, that's it. I'm just gonna explode. And so um, he like drunkenly beats up not only that man, but like uh, also all of the guards in the palace. And he's like super drunk and they like, they take him in front of the king and they're like, love this we love the spirit like we love what you're bringing we love the energy that you bring to this place but also like you can't just like get drunk and like beat everybody up and val's like well i obviously can but um i see what you mean and they're like we're gonna have to punish you for this val uh because it's not like you just don't want to have that kind of thing happen all the time and the way that they punish him is that um they're like okay well now you can't come to war with everybody and he's like no my favorite things indiscriminately killing <laughs> um so that's what's happening in this strip is that uh okay so he's like hurriedly val is sentenced while all good warriors are fighting in the realm you shall remain in camelot and practice self-control and he's like self-control that's the worst um i shall never touch wine again says the heartbroken lad Nonsense, laughs Sir Gwaine. Just remember never to take more than you can hold, like a gentleman. And then we get this this third panel where Val, who looks very old, and he's I think he's meant to be a teenage boy, is like, so Prince Valiant's first chance to prove his mettle in warfare is lost because of his uncontrolled temper. And so it's sort of like the implication is that it's not that he's he's done anything wrong, or like, it is that he's done something wrong, but the thing that's wrong isn't like, beaten on everybody. The thing that's wrong is that he, he wasn't in control of his beatdown. Um, which I just, I mean, like, okay. I do kind of like that he's like, oh boy, I'm never drinking again. I feel like this is very, like, relatable teenage stuff where it's like, can you handle getting drunk? Like, what's it like to get drunk for the first time? And for Prince Valiant, it's like, well, I beat up everybody and now I can't go to war. Mm, I'm so sad. Um, but maybe he's learned a valuable lesson. Huh. So the other thing that um, I learned about Prince Valiant this week, I learned a couple things. Uh, God, I learned some really sad things uh, about the strip. And I don't know, it's not like super sad, but... Um, oh, this kind of looks like a baseball t-shirt. 
Ugh, I don't like that at all. It's like he has like a big leaf for his eyebrow. <laughs> Let's try that again. Um, so one of the things I've learned is that apparently Hal, Hal Foster or Harold Foster, gosh, I just don't know about that eyebrow. Um, I guess he was like a really serious guy, which is not surprising given that, that Prince Valiant is like a achingly serious um, story. Like, to me, it's it's almost like Lord of the Rings, where it's like, you can just tell that the person who's making it, like, takes it seriously. And I think if you watch, like, Lord of the Rings, the movies, like, like there's just, like, this sense of, like, utter seriousness to it. Um, I mean, for better, for better or worse, not the comic strip for better or for worse, but just, like, for better or for worse, this is like serious business. This isn't a joke. Um, there's no like sly wink. Um, look at this guy. He looks so scuzzy. Um, I feel like it's probably the eye that's not quite right, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna leave it for now just because I want to get a little further today than I, I have in the past. Um, wrong layer. So, the thing that I learned is that um, Hal Foster, serious guy, and, and the way that you know he was serious is that he, um, he wouldn't let people call him Hal, or Harry, or Harold. Like, if, if you were working with him, and you were, uh, like, you know, like another comic artist, or like someone just coming in to work with him, um, you called him Mr. Foster. Like, I'm just like, oh, interesting. Like, I feel like maybe that explains some things, but also, like, I can kind of see it. I feel like sometimes it's a way to, like, devalue older people. Um, and I'm thinking of, like, a really specific example in that, so my neighbor's name is Ruth. Uh, she's, mm, let's see, she was born in 1950. I'm not a math person. So she's, like, around 70 and uh, she's very short, and she takes care of the garden at the middle school by her house. And uh, for reasons, one time, uh, I used to work from home, so I, I used to do a lot more with Ruth, but, uh, oh, see, I like that shape. Um, so for, for reasons, uh, I had to judge a, a rose contest because... Uh, you know, the other judge dropped out at the middle school. So I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll judge this rose contest, even though I have no idea, like, anything about roses. And it was me and, like, three fifth graders. And I'm like, yes, I am also here for reasons. Um, Ruth? Anyway. So we go, and, like, the, the principal comes by, and he's like, oh, judging the rose contest. And I'm like, yeah, Ruth is my neighbor. And, like, the other judge dropped out. Um, and the guy's like, oh, we just love Ruthie. And I'm like, excuse me? Ruthie? Like, her name is Ruth. Like, don't call her Ruthie like she's, like, your pet or something. Like, I don't know. I just felt, it just felt like they were like, oh, that Ruthie. I'm like, no, call her Ruth. That's her name. Uh, it kind of makes me want to, like, I'm just like, maybe, like, maybe he knew. Like, maybe Hal Foster, like, maybe he knew. Like, you'll get more respect if you're if you demand it in the way they name you. I'm like, if anyone ever starts calling, like, I don't know. I'm just like, don't call me Ruthie. It's not my name, but don't call me that anyway. Like, don't call her that. I haven't asked Ruth how she felt about it, so she may not care. Like, it's up to her, but still. Uh, but the other thing I found out is that, like, he, he drew this strip forever, Mr. Foster. And, uh, he got to a point where he had, he had Alzheimer's and he just didn't remember that he'd ever made the strip at all. Like, so at the end of his life, he didn't even recognize his own life's work. And I'm just like, wow. Like, no, it's like, a, it's sobering. It's like a, like a message to, to, I don't know, like, enjoy it while you can, enjoy it while you've got it. Like, I don't know, you just don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen. Um, hopefully he got much enjoyment and out of the strip while he 
he had the chance. Um, yeah. The other thing, um, so I was like, kind of given, like, I don't know, so I listened to this back, and I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have said all that stuff about Tarzan. Like, not because it's not important, but because, like, uh, you can't tell that I am white, and so it's like, I don't want to, like, speak for, like, the people who are represented and, like, tell them how, like, they should feel about it or, like, how it should be felt about, like, his, like, Foster's representations of, like, jungle cultures, like, if it's just one of those, like, oh, yeah, throw it onto the pile, like, like, I am not the source of information on what we should do with that culturally, like, it's just not, like, my opinion isn't needed, like, listen to, like, people who are actually, like, impacted by that negatively, and you can argue that we all are, but I just... Like, the reason that I mentioned it at all was just because I didn't want people, like, if, if somehow you go back and you're like, oh, this Hal Foster, like, he's, like, an interesting guy. I'd like to learn more about him. I don't want you to, like, one, be surprised when you find, like, imagery that is, like, reflective of, you know, someone who lived in his time. Um, I just don't want you to think that I didn't see that and, was and like, didn't notice or, like, had no comment on. Like, I just, like... Some people know, like, I see that, and I see why, for people, it's problematic. Uh, and in Tarzan, it's a case of, like, representing um, Africans in ways that, you know, sort of can make them seem, like, lesser than their white protect counterparts. Um, and again, I'm just like, uh, again, I'm not the person that, like, should, like, who you should listen to about this, but since no one's watching this anyway, it's probably fine. Um, but I thought maybe, oh, based on the, like, six Prince Valiants that I've read, surely this doesn't happen in Prince Valiant, and, and that was wrong. Um, it's, it's not that he's depicting, like, people in the forest but he of Africa, but he, it, he does have, like, a, a whole sequence, and two of them, I think, where Val and his wife one, go to America and to, like, the Niagara area. And in, in some ways, like, I've heard that the art in those strips, I haven't, like, come across them yet, that the art in those strips is really, really good because um, Hal Foster was Canadian. And so what he wanted to do was um, draw his, like, native Canadian landscapes, like the stuff that he saw every day. I don't know if he was, he lived in Canada. He's associated with Canada, more so than I am. Um, and so, what would make sense? Like, could a guy from Arthurian England come to that part of Canada? Yes, on a ship. It happened. Um, so it's like, that's a possibility. So it's not crazy that he would have them do that. Uh, and I guess, from what I've read, that, like, Mr. Foster did, like, a lot of research on, like, how they should be dressed and how they should, you know... So it's just, like, it's out there. And I'm not the person who is probably best able to decide what it means. Like, if it was done sensitively, if it is offensive, if it if it's not offensive, like, like don't, don't ask me. Like, ask, you know, First Nations people from Canada. Ask uh, Native people in the United States who were alive at the time that this was coming out, how it affected them. Like, the thing about those that kind of artwork is that you have to have a, a conversation about, like, the subjects and how they were depicted, especially because, like, sort of casual depictions of, of Native people by non-Natives in the past, and America is especially bad at this, have, have really, you know, been harmful. It has presented people in a way that has, like, led to stereotyping, um, but has also led to sort of a casual idea that, that Native culture is something that um, you can just sort of grab from when you're writing a story or creating a world. It's like that you can just pick and choose um, who you want. And, and you have to just think about like how often um, do we see it the other way around, where like, um, like Pocahontas comes to uh, uh, England and is like, so in the Prince Valiant strip, um, Alita, his wife, I'm always thinking I'm saying her name wrong. Like, they think she's a sun goddess because she has blonde hair. So it's like, 
do you ever see it the other way around where like Pocahontas comes to um, England and they think she's a goddess because she has dark brown hair and it, it looks like the night sky or so, you know it's like it can be for some people like not a great read and I think the only point I want to make is that one if I'm doing a live stream I don't have to use that art like I can learn about how Foster and his art from strips that don't include that and I can leave commentary on that to people who are more qualified or have something more interesting to say than I do um, but I just don't want you to think that I don't see it like that I don't recognize that there's you know sort of a troubled history sometimes in comics and comics especially because it was it's for a long time been the province of like a really specific audience and it's catered to what that audience has been interested in seeing and, and it hasn't historically been very sensitive when people are like hey that actually you know I don't love that um, so anyway just continuing the theme I'm always wrong about Prince Valiant um, he's a intense feral child and sometimes the artwork is not as sensitive as you would love but this artwork today is good. Um, and one of the reasons that I think Mr. Foster is such a master at comic art, and especially it's like when you think about how big this is, is that he's really good at perspective drawing. So we've got these two reprobates here. And uh, as the story goes on, what they're going to do is they're going to try and like hold Sir Gwen for ransom. So like these are like <laughs> shady characters. But they're in the foreground and they're closest to us. So they are uh, the most detailed. They are the most like detailed part of the composition. And he, he does such a good job with perspective because when you pull back, here is Val. And he's like our second layer of abstraction. So we've got these super detailed two guys in the front. They're our foreground. And then to give the perspective that Val is, is behind them, his face is much less detailed. Like... Like here in the guy's face in the front, he's got shading, he's got like definite hair texture. You can see like what his clothes look like. These guys have like fully rendered, um, you know, sort of detailed shading. And then we have Val and his face is much less finely detailed. But you know, there's still some detail to it. You can see that he's there, but you can tell that he's behind them. And then we go to these knights who are riding across the bridge and they have super tiny faces um so it's sort of like the that those three levels just moving back where we have the super detailed in the front we have a moderately detailed in the midground and then there is like a uh like like the furthest level of abstraction in the back it just gives that sense of such great depth and i think that's really the thing that people can take away from how foster and his art is just like sort of that that method of getting depth by using varying levels of detail and abstraction. Um, and you can get that with his background, you can get that with these people things. Like I think it's just like if you're looking at his art, like this is a thing to really look for. And I'm gonna, um, oh boy, how, how do I want to do this? Because what I think happens with, um, Val, and, and it's okay, I can call him Val, they call him that in the comics, is, a. Uh, I th I think they give him that bucket hair, and then he uses a white pen to brush on the highlights, but I'm trying to figure out, like, how to do that, how to do that. Also, Val has this kind of, like, funny snub nose, like, just a little... Just a little snub nose. Um, this is, is that good? I don't know, something feels kind of wrong. I think it's the line above the eye that I'm sort of missing. Maybe, or, hmm, I don't know, I'm just, you know what? Let's try again. Take that down, take that way down. I'm gonna change my go for calligraphy. Ugh, too big. Okay. Let's try this again. 
Again, face is most important part. If you're gonna like try, try again, like this is where to try, try again. Okay, this makes him look a little more arch. Okay, sorry, I'm concentrating. Okay. Okay. Mm. No. I don't know if this is any better. He looks a little more. Mm, I don't know. I guess he's like kind of, kind of snotty. Not not even snotty, but just like. Well, why aren't we doing the thing that I said? Because um, the thing I said is awesome. Uh, he's all teen, teen experience. I wonder, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a layer and I'm going to put it on top of my black and white layer. And then I'm going to take a painting brush. I'm going to, oh, it's so big. Okay. I, you guys were flying off the rails here. I've never tried this before. Um, but we're just going to try the white wash. This is not right at all. Um, this is what I get for trying something new, but we're just going to try it. We're just going to try it. Okay, we're going to go back to my ink. I think I was doing that too. The black. Okay. Oh, that looks awful. Just terrible. But I'm gonna have to practice that technique. It was worth a try. It was worth a try. Oh god, no. Okay. I admit defeat. That doesn't look good, but we're just gonna keep going. Uh really the main thing I want to say about like artwork and especially comic artwork is like if you got something to say about it, just let me know. Make a comment, but also be aware that maybe nobody cares about your opinion. That's that's not what I meant. <laughs> Just, I don't know. I don't know. Stay in your lane, I guess. Like, or you know what? Do whatever you want. I'm not the police. I guess, like, I'm, I'm the moderator. So if you, like, say dumb stuff and everybody hates it, like, I don't know. Just maybe don't do that. Uh, if you can, like, just be cool. God, everything I say, like, makes it worse, so I'm just gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. Um, I was kind of looking up statistics today about comics. Like, just sort of, like, on that, that issue where it's just like, oh, man. It's like when you ask the question, it's like, why don't you see like a lot of stories where like say Native Americans have come to England and like taught the barbarians how to take care of the land or like something like that like like it's like why is it like why is it the comics are this like this way where it's like mostly five men four men and like like if we're getting really granular it's like for white men um because people like comics um and I, and I feel like it's almost like a dangerous question to ask because uh, sometimes the answers that people come up with are really crummy where it's like, and I guess the answer is that is like, oh gosh, I, I told myself before this that I wasn't going to like get all political again because <laughs> it's like, I don't know, I'm like not an expert. So you know what? I'm just going to stop talking. Uh, no, I'm not. But what I, what I will say is that we live in a time now where it's a lot more accessible to do stuff like this. Like, I think if I had said, oh man, like, what if I wanted to draw comic books? Um, like, in 1950, I just wouldn't have had the opportunity. Like, I wouldn't, you know, have been able to, like, find out a lot of information because I wouldn't have had the internet. I wouldn't have been able to, like, look up technique videos. Um, I wouldn't have been able to do a lot of stuff. And today I can, and that's what I'm grateful for, is that if I want to draw, no one can stop me. Publishing, on the other hand, or getting anyone else to look at it, that's something else. But, you know, we'll survive. Um,
Uh, there were some other comics from the newspaper that weren't even in like my, oh, it just came to mind category. They were just like, oh yeah, why would anyone ever mention those? Those comics. Um, and so two of them are, I'm kind of like convinced that they're the same, is uh, Wizard of Id and, um, oh god, it's like Wizard of Id, but like with cavemen. Ooh, maybe BC? Um, and I feel like they're the same ones, except you know that one of them's about a wizard because it's called the Wizard of Id, and one of them's about cavemen because it's called BC, but like, those are comics again where I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I do not care about that. Oh, <laughs> okay, I just got through being like, oh, I'm not gonna be political. Uh, Except I looked up Dilbert, or I looked up Scott Adams, who was the creator of Dilbert, and I'm like, maybe, like, I should, like, look, I should, like, look into that again and make sure I'm not just, like, talking trash uh, for no reason. And I was like, oh, no, I'm talking trash for, like, significant reasons. And, like, no matter how you feel about Scott Adams, like, you, you can't deny that he is someone who's commenting outside his lane. Um, so, like, the reason that Scott Adams was in the news, like, yesterday is that, um, I guess the guy who played Jar Jar Binks, I promise this is related, uh, the guy who played Jar Jar Binks in Star Wars, uh, is black. And he was just maybe being like, hey, you know, like, uh, I went to really great schools, um, like, I know what I'm doing, like, oh, it's just kind of like, man, sometimes I feel like I'm not getting work because of the color of my skin. Uh, I would need to, I should probably not just guess what he's saying. And people are like, and so Scott Adams, for some reason, decides to comment and be like, oh yeah, um, my show got canceled because the UPN decided that they were going to go for a more urban audience. And it was like, one, who asked? Like, who asked? Who? who? Like, seriously, who asked? Uh, two, he's given like more than one interview for like the reasons why his show Dilbert got canceled and like this is the first time he's been like oh yeah it's because they told me it was uh they don't want want you know they want more urban i.e black stuff on the UPN which was a network that catered towards African Americans uh unlike the other you know five or six networks that you know almost exclusively catered to white people but that's fine uh <laughs> Yeah, so that was like, oh, let me check in with Scott Adams and, and see if he's, like, talking, talking crap. Oh, yep, he is, still is. And he has, like, a YouTube channel where he just, like, like, every title of, like, everything he's done is, like, here's my hot take on current politics and how the world is. And I'm like, oh, dude, if I had that much money, I would not have a YouTube channel where I talk about politics. I'm like... I would pay people not to talk to me about politics. They'd be like, oh, the upcoming election? I'd be like, here's $100. Like, tell me your favorite candy bar. Um, gosh, what's my favorite candy bar? Sometimes it's hard to tell. Because um, it's like, what am I in the mood for? So I guess it's like if you have the question, like, I could only eat one candy bar. Oh, that's such a hard question. I just want to eat all the candy bars. I think that's not quite right. Hmm. Is that meant to be near? I don't think so. Ah, we'll leave it. Um, I like this brush I made too. I feel like I'm always getting closer to like the exact thing that I'm looking for. Basically, I just don't want to have to go back and fill in stuff. Okay, back to my favorite candy bar. Like, what the content everyone is really here for. I know why you tuned in. <laughs> Just kidding, no one tuned in. Um, gosh. My first instinct is to say a payday bar. Because uh, I think that was, like, my mom's favorite candy bar. And, um... I would remember I'd just get them and it was, like, I don't know. I'm not going to say this was weird, because I bet if I do, people will be like, oh no, I do that. Um, but I do like to eat my candy bars in, like, uh, non-traditional ways, I'll say it that way. So what I like to do if I get um, 
sorry, I'm just like, I'm distracted. I'm looking at the shape, like, I wonder if this diamond shape is really serving me. This is like the first time I've used like the diamond base. I wonder if that other brush I have is actually closer. No, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna keep it with this for now. Anyway, so, so someone somewhere is gonna be listening to this and be like, get to the candy bar. Um, so what I would do is I would just eat all the peanuts off and then I would eat all the caramel in one go and I still do that sometimes like uh I'll just eat a bunch of I'll just eat all the peanuts and I'll eat the caramel I like did it not that long ago um so yeah paydays I like and if, if you live in a country that doesn't have payday bars uh it's basically just a caramel with peanuts on it like stuck to the side so it's just basically just caramel and peanuts um Another candy bar, but I don't know, maybe I would want a Butterfinger, like if I just had to pick one. Um, Butterfingers, if you don't have them, or like a like a crunchy peanut butter based bar. I don't know, I like peanut, I like, and again, I like to eat the chocolate off and then eat the peanut butter inside separately. And I do the same thing with not with Snickers, because that's too hard. Um, Milky Way I will do, which is so Milky Way is just like a, a, a nougat covered in chocolate. And I guess uh, in other countries, Milky Ways are Mars bars? I don't know. It's an American. There's an American way we say it. This horse is not the greatest, and I don't know why. I think maybe in the coloring, I'm not sure. It's it's almost like the, the horse's back seems a little too far down. I don't know, it could also be this this sort of diamond pen. I'm not like in love. I feel like the search goes on. Yeah. Oh, Twix, that's the other candy bar that I eat where I like eat, eat the caramel and then eat the shortbread. It'd be easier if I just got shortbread and caramel separately, but I don't think they sell that. Ooh. So I've been getting uh, these drawing books, just kind of looking through like pen and ink advice and one of the things that I picked up is like just like breaking up your strokes sometimes so like like that instead of just drawing like one line and I'm like oh helpful and there, here I was just drawing straight lines like a chump breaking them up that's the trick it's funny about some of the drawing books and and maybe I'll do a, a live stream like of the technique is that sometimes like People who write drawing books are like, ah, yes. I will simply show them a triangle, step one, and then step two, just draw a duck. Like, whatever, it's totally fine. And you're like, wait, I need more information. I don't know how to go from triangle to duck. Um, so some of the books I've gotten definitely have that like, all right, you can draw a triangle, here's the duck. And then some of them are like, here are 7,000 words that teach you how to draw a duck, but no drawing. So it's sort of like, I don't know, the further back into like Victorian times you go, the harder it is to like, I don't know, I don't know, to find a drawing book that isn't like densely worded. And for such a like visual, um, for su I mean, for such a visual meaning, it's, it's all visual, like a drawing. Like, I'm just surprised at how many drawing books, like, use words. But sometimes it's, it's good for me, personally, to have it written down like that. Um, it, using words, using some other way than visuals. Because it's like, oh, you've got, like, two chances to win, I suppose. Yeah, this brush isn't going to last full time. But I kind of want to keep going with it just to, like... Since I started it with it, if I move to a different brush, like things are going to start to look weird. I wonder if I need, like, 
just the smaller ink. Like, like we've just gotten to the point where um, like there's just too much detail work, so I, I shouldn't have like such a fat brush. And it's hard, like, like here I'm like avoiding this because I don't really know what these shapes are. It's like it's something, something's going on, like there's a horse, but maybe there's also a guy behind the horse, I'm not quite, so I'm just like making it up. And Mr. Foster obviously probably knew what he was doing, but I don't, so I don't know if I'm just giving like too much detail. That's okay. I think like if I was like, what I should really do is like do this, yes. But then like come back and try and draw a crowd scene of my own where it's like not with horses just so I can get like I don't know it's a, it's a different kind of learning maybe I will I'd like to think I would I probably won't but I'd like to think I would So I'm, now I'm just thinking candy bars. Candy bars I've eaten. Candy bars I'd like to eat. Candy bars that don't exist. Candy bars I've eaten in foreign countries. Oh, this looks bad. That's okay. We're going to keep going. We're just going to keep going. Ugh, I thought this was going to be easy somehow. God, the moon makes it look weird. Thanks a lot, Mr. Foster. This doesn't look, I guess, sometimes if you get too close to it, you, I don't know. I think that looks like a, a thing. It doesn't look like not a thing. Maybe I'll cheat and just kind of like wimp out and work on these bricks. <laughs> um, bricks are very important. Important, important work. I wonder what pen he's using there. I don't know, it's hard to tell. I was surprised that, um, or I guess I was and wasn't surprised that Hal Foster was such a serious guy. Um, because you really do get the sense of like, I don't know, again, I'm referencing it and, and I'll show you someday where it's like, that this is, this is someone who's taking this seriously. I'm trying to think of like an example, like how, um, Lord of the Rings was also that way. I'm like, what is it that makes it serious? It's like, it's like they don't acknowledge any of the like, I don't know, it's just like, it's kind of funny to like, be attacked by a giant alligator. Like, like maybe you, you, you have a quip, like you're like, ho ho, see you later alligator, or you know, something not so, not so horrible. Um, but I guess that's just like, Oh, that's not good, but we're just going to let it ride. Um, <laughs> that's what people come here to see, is half-assed brickwork. <laughs> uh, it's like what happens when you when you don't have that, that Han Solo character who's, like, kind of cynical. Um, it, because if all the characters in your your piece are, like, serious... Like, I'm trying to think, like, is there comic relief... In Lord of the Rings, and I guess Pippin, like, he's the hobbit that's always sort of, like, messing things up. And then when he's not around, it's Gimli, um, the dwarf. And then, like, super serious man is Aragorn, who, like, he never cracks a joke, and, like, the elves never crack a joke, and, and Gandalf doesn't really crack jokes, um, although he is a trickster, making everybody think he's dead. Um, oh, this doesn't look good. I, there's something wrong. Like, I don't have the right brush for this, I don't think. Like, I don't, like, I, there's something about this that I'm missing, and if that's, and I'm not sure what. Um, see, like, there's, like, a little chain mail, or, like, a little mace. I'm just gonna go out. Ah, poor Val, just missing all the killing. Think of how fun it would have been. Just being out there fighting in a war. 
What if the next war isn't as good? Ugh, if only he'd learn self-control, he could be out there murdering away. Um, I do look forward to reading more. Because, I, I mean, I'm getting the sense that it's like, you could have read this, like, starting in 1940 and read it for 30 years and watched Val grow up and become, like, a knight and, and get married and have a son who eventually, you know, goes out into the world. Like, you could grow... People could have grown with this character uh, in ways that, that would be hard for other characters. Um, like, just, there's an intimacy to it, to, to knowing a character this long and to seeing a character develop this long. I'm really interested. I wonder if people will come back to this property, this intellectual property. I feel like the last movie came out in the 90s. I feel like it, it's a hard sell, but I feel like you could do a, like, young Prince Valiant, um, and it, it, it might, you know, do something. Like, I'm like, Netflix, are you listening? Make a young feral Prince Valiant, like, fighting a bunch of bog monsters. Um, and then, like, going out into the world. The thing that would be hard about that is it's hard to get, like, a hard to get a young actor like I feel like he'd like because a lot of times they grow up and they look weird thinking about the, the kids on Stranger Things I'm like ooh boy okay they're great they're all wonderful and every one of them is as beautiful as a person can be except that one you know who I'm talking about <laughs> um, but I do think there, there could be room there could be room for this character I don't know Maybe, maybe that people are done trying to make Prince Valiant look cool. This is not my favorite little knight, but he's so far back, it might not matter. Oh, here I am again, like, zooming in. I shouldn't be zoomed in so tight. In my defense, some of this information is very hard to parse. Let's just back this up. She got pretty far. Brick debacle notwithstanding. Oh, look at these guys. Just this difference in depth. I'm like, ah, oh, so good. I really do need to try and like do this on my own with like something original. Um, we'll do that in time. Okay, I think I'm done for now. I feel like. Like, I got a good sense of, like, each level of difference and, like, sort of taking things far back. So, thank you for joining me. Um, as I always sort of reluctantly say, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe if someday you should ever listen to this. Uh, if you ever listened to this all the way through, thank you. That was very nice of you. You didn't have to, but you did. Um, yeah. Thanks for joining me in the world of Prince Valiant, and uh, I'll see you next time.